you are a master of newton's first law right what does it say an object at rest will remain at rest and an object going at a constant velocity will have that constant velocity until and unless an external force is applied that's what it says now the question i have for you is from a from a book that i read called the case of the walking dog it's a really lovely question i'm going to ask you that the question is hey there's a dog that's sleeping on the floor okay so the dog is at rest yeah the dog is at rest the dog wakes up decides to take a walk and starts walking now is the dog in motion yes it is so an object at rest is now not at rest but nobody kicked the dog nobody no nobody external pushed the dog or kicked the dog how is the dog moving by itself think about that question what's your explanation for this did you think about the three options in front of you now which of them is correct now what happened many many years ago was when newton created these newton's laws he forgot to think about living things he what he really had to do was when he told any object at rest will remain at rest he forgot to put like a little thing that we put it and say any non living object at rest will remain at rest and any non living object will that's already moving will continue moving until an external force is applied it does not work for living things newton's laws don't work for living things they only work for non living things so a living thing can move by itself right clearly the dog that's sleeping can stand up and start walking by itself i can just decide nobody is pushing me i can just decide to walk by myself so do newton's laws work for living things think about that question great now i'm sure some of you at least are convinced that living things don't fall under the bucket of newton's laws newton's laws don't work for living things or is it think about that question now what i want you to think about is if living things can move by themselves then can you think of a case where a living thing cannot move by themselves so what did we begin we began telling that science is where once you believe something you try to disprove it so now you believe that living things can move by themselves can you think of an example where that is not true take some time to think about it now i can think of one think about it this way right imagine that i took a piece of floor and then made it super smooth it's a famous episode lovely episode that i remember from my childhood of tom and jerry where uh, tom's on a bowling alley it's called the bowling alley cat and tom's on the bowling alley and as you can see tom's trying to walk really really hard but he cannot walk by himself looks like it right so if tom in this case can't walk by himself the floor the slipperiness of the floor seems to matter then can you begin to question your idea that can living things actually move by themselves if the floor matters then something about the floor does is helping tom walk what is it and the answer is that's right you probably figured it out by now right the answer is when the floor is really when the floor is really slippery this almost sounds like a tongue twister what you can't do why can't you walk is because when you really walk on a on a rough surface like this what you're doing if you're a cat like tom you're actually pushing back against the floor so if you're walking think about it you're actually pushing the floor right which is why if you wear spikes and run you run better because you get a better grip you're pushing against the floor tom's doing that and then but why should that mean he's moving forward because when you push against the floor the floor pushes you back pushes you in the opposite direction so you push the floor back the floor pushes you forward and then you move forward so what am i saying here right i'm giving you a glimpse of what's called third law if you push the floor the floor will push you back right will push you in the opposite direction it's called newton's third law every action has an equal and opposite reaction i'm only giving you a sneak peek here you learn about this later you're getting a sneak peek but the key idea here is there is an external force it's from the ground right the tom pushes the floor back the dog pushes the floor back and the floor is pushing them forward so the external force is coming from the floor in other words i lied to you i lied to you and i told you that newton's laws only work for non living things that's not true living things cannot move by themselves they cannot just like you saw if there was no floor if the floor was too slippery tom or the dog or you cannot move by yourself if you still don't believe me just walk up to wherever you are go stand and try to punch yourself and land somewhere far away if you can do that then it might be true or try to carry yourself you cannot do any of these things right you can't punch yourself and land far away to carry yourself what do you really do you push against the ground 
and the ground pushes you back and you go up. It's called jumping. But that's essentially what you're doing. You're pushing the ground and the ground is what's pushing you up. Without the ground, you cannot really jump or move up. So what have I done here? Shown you once again that you should not believe me too much because I tend to lie to you. So Newton's laws are so universal, are so basic that they don't care. They don't discriminate between living things, non-living things and all. You know why? Because in fact, living and non-living, the line is very blurry. If you have to really go think about this question, hey, what makes a thing living? You should go think about it because it's kind of hard to decide what's living and what's not. So Newton's laws work for both living things and non-living things. And therefore, even living things cannot actually move by themselves. So let's think of one case where you, know, you can put this. Let, let's put your new knowledge to a test. Imagine you are an astronaut and you have just been abandoned. Like people forgot about you because you're just like, you know, roaming around. And so you're floating around in space and your spaceship is beginning to leave. And now you have like, they're counting down. They'll have 10, 9, and you have very little time to get back. And you're looking around. How do you get back to your spaceship? Think about that question. Now, one of the most common answers that I get is you turn around and start swimming towards it. Now, did you feel like that could work? Now, why did you feel like that could work? Because you can move by yourself, right? But you can't. When you're swimming on Earth in, say, water, in a pool, what you're really doing is you're pushing the molecules of water behind, and then they, in turn, push you forward. Newton's third law. If you push, the water will push you back. So that's why you're moving forward. But in space, can you push against anything? If you push, you'll just look really silly because there's nothing you're pushing against. So you'll just be standing in the same place looking like an idiot. So, but how can you? Is there any hope at all for you? Think about that. Well, there is. Theoretically, if you, uh, if you have something with you, like maybe your phone, this is not the time to be thinking about how expensive it is. You can take it and throw it in that direction. And then because you threw it, you applied a force on it, you'll feel a force in the opposite direction and you'll move towards the spaceship. That's the only way you can move. It's the only way. You need something else, putting a force on it so that you can get a force in the other direction. So in summary here, do Newton's laws work for living things? Think about that question. Great. Now with this, the bigger point here is that things that are deep and fundamental like Newton's laws, the fundamental ideas, you don't understand them by just listening, reading them in a textbook or listening to it once. You actually understand them by going through question after question, thinking deeply about them. So pat yourself on the back for doing that. And now in the next couple of stations, what I want you to do is unwrap some more of these questions that have been gifted to you and get a deeper understanding of Newton's laws.